Hey everybody, Ben, Somerville Gardener. Today, I'm planting and transplanting some rosemary. Now this has looked certainly better in its day. So I'm gonna show how I'm going to plant and transplant this out into the yard in zone 8B, 9A, so that I can get the best results in my soggy clay soil. Wow, just look at all those roots under there. Crazy. I think it's time this guy got in the ground. So if you're looking to ditch the supermarket rosemary, uh, it's a very easy plant to grow either indoors or out, uh, depending on where your zone is. As far as if you're in zone 8 or warmer, you can definitely grow this out in your yard. Uh, just make sure you protect it from really deep, hard frost. I think it's about 20 degrees it'll go down to, roughly. And if you're in zone 7 or colder, you might want to bring it in or just go ahead and grow it on your kitchen windowsill or any place in your house that you want to have that nice, fragrant smell because who wouldn't love that smell? It just reminds me of Christmas, you know? Okay, so you've made a decision to plant some rosemary, for me, in the ground. That's what I'm gonna be going with. In a pot, it's pretty easy. Put it in a pot, put it inside. Out in the ground, it's really important to know both when to plant it and where to plant it and what medium to plant it into. So that first really important part was when to plant it. Right now, it's the middle of August. We're gonna call that the second best time to plant rosemary out in your yard. The first best is going to be in the beginning of spring, once you've passed that last frost date. This will allow the roots to go ahead and get settled into the dirt before those blazing hot heat days start baking your plant. Because rosemary loves full sun. It also loves nice dry roots. It's a very drought tolerant plant, which is a bonus for it. So if you've got wet soggy soil like I do, or really thick clay, or maybe you just wanna grow it in a swamp, stick around and see how I'm gonna plant it in my swampy backyard. Now, one of the worst places you can plant your rosemary is in the shade and in the wet soil, like soggy, wet, nasty soil. So guess what I did last year when I first got my first rosemary? It's been about a year and a half ago, maybe even two years. I think originally this is one of those uh, little Christmas tree kind of, like a rosemary Christmas tree. Yeah, it was like a rosemary Christmas tree kind of, rosemary shaped up into a Christmas tree. Anyway, that's how I got it. In that next spring of last year, I came out here and just threw it in the ground in this nice, lovely, shady corner that also has all the water draining down into it. I'm kind of surprised that this thing has survived as well as it has. What's interesting is the way that it's grown actually towards the shade, but it, the whole thing's just kind of leaned over. I'm sure this sweet potato vine didn't help much at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dig this guy up. Just, you know, dig a circle, pop it on up, and then we're going to get it transplanted to a better spot. Hey guys, if you like content like this, make sure you like and subscribe. It really makes my worms wiggle. Come on, you can wiggle. Yeah, wiggly worms. Oh, that's gross. Okay, that was a really violent uh, tear out of the poor little thing. I don't know what roots belong to the rosemary and what belong to the tree that's right here next to it, but here you go. Here's what's left of the root system on it. Hopefully that's enough to let it survive. And this poor thing is just covered in spider webs and mites and aphids and all kinds of junk. I think it's just a wonder that this thing's still alive at this point. But that just goes to show how robust of a plant this really can be. Planted in poor soil, lots of compaction, very wet. Let's just hope it enjoys its new home a lot better. Let's go stick it in the ground with its potted friend. Now one of the first things I'm going to do before putting this in the ground is get my soil set up. Not many people have a backyard like mine where it's completely covered in wood chips. But what I like to do on my yard is basically make volcanoes where everything can be planted above ground so any water that does come down doesn't pool and sit where my plant roots are it can soak in go down into the ground and evacuate itself eventually once all the sogginess you know lets up or drains out or evaporates or whatever it does now usually for a tree I'll just take one or two of these bags, mix it in with some of the, we'll call it the humus that's starting to form at the base of my ground, just above ground level. Ugh, mosquito. But for the rosemary, I'm gonna have to do something a little different because it likes really well draining soil. So to begin with, I'm gonna start with two bags of jungle growth. That's about three cubic feet of a professional potting mix. It's well rotted. We'll call it a well composted potting mix. And then I'm gonna add one of these, what is this, a 40, 50 pound bag? A 50 pound bag of play sand, just to give it a little bit of extra sandy drainage. 
when I look at this potty mix, I can see that there is some sand mixed into it, but I do know that it holds onto water pretty well. And what I want to do is make it hold onto water a little less, less better, less well, less water, less retention. Sandy, you know, just let it go. You could also use perlite or any other vermiculite or whatever it is that you want to use. I'm just going to use this because I want to see if it works. I want to see how well it does. There we go. There's three cubic feet of professional potting mix and 50 pounds of sand. Let's get this mixed up. Okay, I'm going to say that's pretty well mixed up or good enough. It's not exactly a perfect homogeneous mix, but you know, it's okay if there's all sand pockets in there. As I'm scooping it around or whatever, it'll continue to mix. Good enough for who it's for, right? And now that you can see how big and lovely my backyard is, covered in wood chip, I'm gonna find myself a general spot to plant this. I'm gonna go ahead and rake out this area and then we'll get to looking at what's left. I'll show you that here in a second. Now that I've got my little crisscross hatch of a plus sign kind of thing, just digging everything out into a square. You'll see that even now, we haven't had rain in probably about a week or so, but the week prior to that, a tropical storm came through and dumped about 16 inches of rain on us in just less than one week. And this is some very wet, mucky, nasty, gunky stuff. Still a little bit of clay down through here. Some really gunky stuff. Let me see if I can get all the rest of these wood chips out the way just so you can see how mucky this is. That'll continue to break down. So you can see just how deep I've got my wood chips here. That's got to be going at least about 8 or 10 inches down from the, uh, the top ground level here. And as we get down to that level, it's already starting to pool up water right there. And that is no bueno for our rosemary. And there we go. There's finally the bottom. Just sandy clay. Gross sandy clay. Nothing but gunk. Just spoink, gunk. So I'm going to go ahead and plant on top of my first layer of wood chips that have already broken down real well. After that, the second layer will continue to withhold some moisture, provide it with some drainage, I hope, break down and eventually become some nice humic topsoil. Hmm. But that isn't ultimately the end of this because we're going to use that filter that we just made to make a volcano. So a little bit on my knowledge of wood chips when it comes to gardening. One, you don't wanna put wood chips on top of your planting soil right close to your roots because if you do that, it will leach just a little bit of the nitrogen out of the soil and then you won't have good nutrients for your plants. Nobody wants that. The other thing, whenever you make your ring around a tree, you wanna make sure that it's not touching the base of the tree with wood chips because that can cause the roots to grow into the, the mound or the volcano of wood chips that you make. And those roots can grow around the trunk, girdle it, and actually choke off and kill the tree. And nobody wants to kill their tree. However, in this case, we're planting up our rosemary on top of the volcano. Let me show you how I make it. Once I go ahead and excavate all of this wood chippy stuff on the top, I'm gonna go ahead and backfill the hole about up to ground level. And by ground level, I mean where the wood chips are up here at the top. And once we have this good and filled, we're gonna make our little volcano. Everybody knows the volcano has a hole in the center. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a little hole in the center. And I'm not sure if you're able to tell the three-dimensional aspect of this, but where my level of the wood chips is, I wanna make sure that my planting mound, my planting volcano is at about that level or even just a little bit higher. Higher is fine. And then to make a little depression in the center where we're going to put our plant. Now in this case, um, I don't know, I might actually plant this just straight on the mound, but that actually doesn't look too bad. We're gonna go with that. It'll be fine, maybe. I don't know, we'll see. And once I've got the plant in there, Usually they stand up because they've got a better root ball, but in this guy's case, I just kind of murdered this thing when I was pulling it out. I'm not really sure how much thriving it was doing to begin with, so I'm just going to backfill on top of this, pull this out a little bit, try and get a lot of these roots down underground. It looks like it was trying to put off a root and start a whole other plant over here on the side. So let me see what I can do to jam that thing in, kind of pile the dirt up in around it, and then continue on with my volcano making. There we go, that should do. Now I'm just gonna pack the dirt in lightly around it. So you can see we've got our nice little volcano hill mound that we're planting up on top of. And this is starting to look a little bit more like a big old mountain than a hill. Wow, really piled some dirt up around this guy. That should do just fine right there. Whew, I think my whole face is gonna end up smelling like rosemary when I get done with this. Let's hope that's not a bad thing. Now that I've got my hill made, all I have to do is 
cover it up. And that's as easy as taking my little piles that I had made my little plus sign with and just kind of dress it up a bit. And when this is all done, you'll see a little bit of a mound of wood chips right around it. And in the next few days or weeks, as gravity takes effect, this will all just kind of push down. I'll just stomp it in real good in the back just to make sure that it's holding on. And ooh, oh, these are the roots from the papaya. I sure hope I didn't plant it too close to the papaya. Not that I'm even thinking that this papaya is going to survive the winter here anyway, but it might. Another thing about the rosemary is they typically like slightly acidic soil around the uh, six to seven range. And I've got a whole pile of uh, pine wood chips back over here full of pine needles. So I'll probably fill in this whole area just to make it, you know, slope real nice, grade it around a little bit. And that'll help add just a little bit of acidity to the soil. Not much, but a little bit, and it'll help. Oh no, I broke one. He got a broken arm. It'll survive. Now out of that first two bags of potting mix and the bag of sand, this is about how much is left over. Not much. To be honest, it looks a bit more than what it really is. There's not much left. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing to the other rosemary, the one that's in that little clay pot. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. And I'll be right back to show you what they both look like. Back in two, two and two. What was that from? Name that game show, two and two. Now that we got this all done, I've got a little bit of extra dirt left over. So why don't you stick around for one of my next videos where I'm gonna be using some of this extra dirt and that two to one mix of soil to sand and showing how I start ginger for planting both indoors and outdoors. All right, and that looks real nice there got a nice little hill mound here and we'll go ahead and get this all covered up with our wood chips and i'll go ahead and backfill it and then grade it just a little bit kind of like how i'm going to do with the other one over here and let me show you that one how it looks and how they all came out now these guys will settle down just a little bit as they kind of you know just natural gravity as it takes effect here so they won't always be quite as you know hilly as what they are right now and here's a shot of this other one right over here right next to the papaya and the guava over here and the fig back over here on the other side. So we're just gonna go ahead and keep on filling this in. We've got our papaya over here, rosemary here, got a loquat, got some bamboo, some more papayas back over here, another rosemary, a guava, and another fig right here, just kind of filling it all in and waiting for it all to pop and grow up. So make sure you keep those thumbs green, pass away, and know that you are appreciated.